Thanks, David. Appreciate the great introduction. I uh, appreciate also everyone's time today. I'm uh, really fortunate to be here. Uh, glad to be sharing some of my insights with you. So hey, that's me. I'm an entrepreneur, a geek, and a friend. Now, I've used the word friend to describe me for as long as I can remember, probably going back to when I first joined Twitter in like early 2007. You know, the notion of friend defines me as close as the other words do, as close as the passion of being a geek, as close as the hustle of being an entrepreneur. By definition, friendship is a cooperative and supportive relationship between people. It's a really important one. In all the new conversations, the new faces, the new coffees I'm having with people, I've approached them with the same mutual trust, knowledge, and respect that I would a friend. Now call it Canadian of me, but there's been no reason not to, really. I mean, all those conversations deserve the right questions to be asked, the right knowledge to be shared, the right quest for commonality. Now over time, as a result of this, I've had a chance to meet a lot of people in this approach, a lot of friends. Over time, those friends have become peers, and slowly but surely, those peers have become communities. Now, what's really important is that the common thing between all of these things it was really, really simple. It was just a dark, roasted, and delicious coffee, something that I really enjoy. And so I want to use our time together to explore something simple. There's a relationship between coffee, conversation, and community, and the role of what I'll call the coffee meeting plays in innovation in Canada, just from my personal perspective. This is Bia's Espresso Bar. It's just tucked away at Queen Street East, beside one of those cool brick and bean buildings where a lot of startups play. Um, they serve early espresso. It's one of my favorites that's readily available on the market. I, uh, I was supposed to have my first coffee meeting ever here, or so I thought. I was a New Year's student just late in 2005. I showed up to a professional conference, and across the room, I spotted someone I would consider an industry expert. I mustered up my courage, and I went on over and introduced myself, I exchanged a few good thoughts, and before I knew it, I had a business card. And I said, hey, would you mind if we grab a coffee sometime? I'd love to ask you some you know, personal questions. To my surprise, he said yes, and we exchanged a few emails back and forth. I only got the meeting for four weeks later, but I was excited. Got my portfolio out, wrote down my questions that I had for him. I dressed up a little better than I do normally. I showed up in my car about 30 minutes sooner. I only grabbed a water, so I wanted to make sure that I got to buy him the coffee. Sat down, two o'clock hit. No sign of him. It's okay, it was just two. 2.15, shot him an email to make sure I was at the right the espresso bar. 2.30, a phone call, 2.45, another one. At three o'clock, I got the latte to go, and I just sailed on my way home. I got an email later that uh, afternoon telling me that he got caught up in some other meetings, and he found time to reschedule us. And I really thought to myself, I'm like, is this how it is? Is this how people are supposed to learn from each other? Is this how it should be? Is this how it has to be? And I realized really that, no, there was no reason that that's how communities or, or peers or friends looked at each other that I would never do that to someone else, that I understood the impact a coffee meeting could have on someone like me. And so I did the only thing I could, I turned to my friends. I was like, well, if he won't have coffee with me, people I know will. So I started to look in my friend groups and a few of us found uh, you know, like minds in technology and innovation. And we started to get together regularly at Starbucks. They were the only ones that had Wi-Fi back then and dumped with us. Um, it didn't quite look like this, but we had a lot of Macs lined up, so it was a little interesting. Uh, we got together regularly on Sundays, a few of us, and we started to invite others, and that restored my faith in the notion of coffee culture and meeting people over coffee. It was interesting, we gave a name to it, we called it Geek Meets. They were Geek Meets, they were cool. We met up on Sundays, sometimes we dreamt of the startups we'd create, other times we solved each other's work and school problems. Sometimes we would even do marathon projects where we'd just pack out a site or a new WordPress build in like four to six hours sitting at a Starbucks. It was a lot of fun. As other people joined, we got new knowledge and information. It became just this routine for us, something that was really important over coffee. Now, I renewed my faith in the coffee meeting because you never know where open conversations could close. Two of those folks are now my business partners today at Jack Cooper. But shortly after graduation, I joined uh, a software marketing business, and up I was, under David's wing, looking at how to market uh, the software giants. And, I was ambitious. I took on every challenge I could in my grasp, really trying to see what impact could I make in this organization. I took those challenges and I went out back to the geek meets. And I was like, oh, how could we resolve some of these things? Never giving away anything really private. 
Now, what I also started to do with my renewed faith was reach out to new people. And I brought back new ideas, new cases, new knowledge from the trenches that I don't think the organization would otherwise have ever, ever had access to. And it was interesting, because I applied them, and they worked. I took these little nuggets of information from other places that brought them to, to much larger contents. I was like, whoa, that works, that's cool. They also kept me sane for a little while while I was there. I knew that companies could learn faster by encouraging external dialogue and conversation openly. In fact, they should make these kinds of things part of their R&D research and innovation time for people. Why not? It's just a coffee. It doesn't cost much. Now, meetings started to have lots of action with them. At the end of the meeting, it was like, okay, I'll introduce you to so-and-so. I'll send you such and such link. I'll see you at this event. Meetings also turned into good ways to aspire to be like others and to see that mutual aspiration return. Those folks turned into informal mentors. And over time, those informal mentors became my support systems to become an entrepreneur. I mean, something not a lot of people know is that when I decided to leave my job, the, one of the first people I told was a stranger that I had met for one of these coffee meetings. You know, we find a lot of comfort in talking to people that don't know much about us other than what we tell them. And that coffee meeting became a sounding board for me to just really hear myself and how excited I was about doing it. So I understood that mentorship wasn't this foggy thing, it's something that I could create. Something that I could create by having coffee with just anyone. Now as an entrepreneur, this was our first office that we got. A little more filled up now, but it was empty, and I needed to find a way to fill it. I didn't know where to start, so I decided to start everywhere. All I did was increase and amplify the number of coffee meetings I was having. They turned into four to six a day, which is really bad for my health, but a lot. I even tried a no coffee challenge once it did not go so well. <laughs> Juice that started this is insane. I, I started everywhere. I talked to a lot of people. And what I found is that the more I shared, the quicker I learned, the better I defined what we were doing, who we were. And all of a sudden, that became an iterative way of just defining and building our business. And something really interesting happened. This is that I shared individuals I was sharing with were going out and having coffee meetings of their own. And the magic moment was when they would have a coffee meeting and somehow I would come up, or my company would come up. All that would do is strengthen our brand, strengthen our reputation, define our credibility in the marketplace a little more, just because I reached out and had that random coffee once. Now, it's part of my lifestyle, I'm hooked. I get coffee meetings from Twitter, from LinkedIn. Social networks drive great weak links, just people that I know, just small nuggets about that I can activate at any point to go have a coffee with. I also show up to lots of events and conferences like Demo Camp. I see a lot of great people there that end up having coffee with me. So. Having an office in the Queen Adelaide West areas means I can just run into people at places like Jimmy's Coffee. People I know, people I don't, people I'm comfortable sitting down for a coffee with. People that I can learn from, people that drive equal value from the conversations that I do. Now people are ready, willing, and everywhere. You just have to give them the opportunity. Someone has to make the first step, why not you? Now, what was really interesting in the last 12 months was I started to run into businesses that were very similar and people that were very similar to me. I was like, oh, well, this is a little odd that we're talking about the same things. At first, I was cautious. I'm like, oh, maybe they're competition. Just did what am I going to say? And then I remember, you're a friend. Just, just speak. Just be honest, be open, be transparent, discuss your ideas, your processes, your clients. And so. now, what ended up happening is it ended up feeling like I was in a time machine. As I met people, I mean, one, five, 10, 20 years up from where I was right now, they had already gone through all the challenges I was facing. It was like taking a snapshot of the future with them, bringing that knowledge back into my own organization, accelerating the pace I was moving at them. I returned the favor by meeting people that were a year, two years, not more than that, but I mean, that I could share the same evidence too. It was really interesting, as we collaborated, this notion of cooperation became really normal became normal to say, well, the market is big enough for all of us. Why don't we just move together? Obvious. We didn't have to get the secrets off the way. We just had to work together. Now, as time got really rough in the calendar at some point, you know, we paired that with the fact that we were really a little over ambitious and got office space more so than we needed. And we just created co-working spaces inside of our office so people could drop by. And all that meant was that I could connect myself, my team, and the folks that were interested with each other. Now we did bring a coffee machine in house. It did burn me once or twice, but it works. And I realized that 
people, it could happen inside of a coffee shop. Those kind of conversations, those coffee meetings, they could happen anywhere. There were systems that we could create out of our own free will. And that's just what we did. What I realized six months ago was all these dynamics are crossing. Friends, mentors, peers, new people. People had already met each other when I sat down with them. One-on-ones turned into two-on-twos, turned into like six of us sitting at coffee shops talking about ideas. And there was a common theme that was flowing between all of that. We were all just technology startup founders looking to make the most of what we had. Now, one of my oldest peers uh, that I met in 2009, well, him and I ended up in San Francisco together shortly uh, last fall. And when we came back, he was like, hey, Satish, there's this really cool thing going on over there. It's like a loosely formed community of people. They just meet up once a week and help each other. It's called Lean Coffee. It's like, whoa. He's like, you want to help me start one here? It's like, definitely. So we started one in September last year. Got a bunch of those peers in the same room. Started talking, started solving each other's problems, started sharing operations and processes over lots of coffee. And they grew larger and larger and a little wiser. And what happened is 34 weeks straight running later, twice a week, Tuesday and Thursday mornings, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m., upwards of 30 startup founders get together. They get together and have rapid coffee meetings as groups that spin off later on through the day and through the weeks. They come back and share those ideas, bring up concepts, own their own outcomes. And what I've seen in those weeks, bit by bit, week by week, is visible progress, visible progress and innovation in each of these companies, and how these conversations have led them to change the way that they do business, to step outside and ahead of themselves. And it became clear that the systems for innovation, they're everyone's responsibility. No one, no one is going to come down and tell us, this is how we need to innovate, this is how you should collaborate, this is how you should discuss, this is how knowledge disseminates through your organizations and in our industry. No, that was up to us. It wasn't impossible to create that. Nobody owns lean coffee. No one, self-directed and self-selected events, set up their own sessions, they choose the topics, they shoot around emails and help each other drive topics, they offer up office spaces. Those things change week by week, day by day. It all starts with a simple coffee meeting. It starts with the notion that this is effortless, friendly, straightforward, just to sit down for a coffee. And I make it a priority still today. I dedicate time in my schedule, week by week, to have these random meetings, to meet new faces. You can just start by never saying no to a coffee. More important than that, if you think about all the people that you meet through your day, at your office, at a client office, at a coffee shop, at an event, on Twitter, anywhere. If you start any of those conversations with, you should go for a coffee sometime. Think about how different your life might be right now. Think about how much new perspective you might be sitting here with. It's not hard. I make it convenient. I go to coffee shops that are local to me that I enjoy. I go at times that I need a coffee anyways because I'm addicted. It's comfortable where the atmosphere is casual, calm, collected. It's useful. I prepare. I look at LinkedIn to understand their past. I look at Twitter to understand their today. I watch a YouTube video to understand how our conversation might go down. It takes me all of five minutes. It's short. 30 to 45 minutes is all you need to find commonality with someone. You just have to keep asking questions. And it's real. There's no expectations. There's no selling. Just talk. Just share. Just explore with each other. Now, innovation, what I'm really getting at, is it doesn't happen in a box. It doesn't happen sitting alone in your basement somewhere, locking you or I away, and coming out and saying, look, I've got an innovation. No. Think about all the major things you might have accomplished as individuals and organizations in the last month. And I'm sure you could pinpoint one thing, one moment, one conversation, one discussion, one talk, something that really got you there, that without which you wouldn't have made that progress. You create your own good fortune firm believer in that. But you have to put yourself in the situations that allow for it, that create that opportunity. Now we've shared this theme through the day, and innovation isn't an outcome, it's a process. Right? You can't find innovation, you can only create it step by step by step. It may not even be new knowledge, it could just be new information to you. Every interaction, every communication, every decision that we make in our innovation process has an outcome on that innovation. And if all we did was increase the velocity at which we had these conversations, how open we were in them, how friendly we were as we had them, then as a community, we can increase the pace at which we innovate. One coffee at a time. 
working together, it's already natural to us. As Canadians, we're ready to hold the door open, smile hello, return the extra change. Well, why would we ignore what's uniquely already ours? We just have to turn to each other and show that same mutual respect. We have the density of entrepreneurs in the city, in the greater Toronto area, of all of Canada. And if all we did was I would trust, I would respect, and I would share every other city in the world, we would have our own stand with innovation and technology innovation in Canada. Now, I can't tell you how innovation hotbeds like Silicon Valley are made. I can't. I can't even say with certainty that's how we should do, let alone if we can. What I can tell you from my personal experience is that we have everything unique to us available at our fingertips to compete at our own level, on our own terms. What I can tell you is that those terms come from the friends, peers, and communities that already exist around us. All we have to do is reach out our hands and start that with a coffee meeting. You have no reason not to ask, and nobody here has any reason to say no. Thank you.